recommend any of the uh, la mian. So it's the handful noodles. Okay. Um, any of these are really, really good. The one is the other one that you said. The I'm first love, yeah. okay. A small with the pop yogurt. Yeah. Okay, anything else? I know what they're trying they to do. They are cute man. here. What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode two of our Chinatown Hidden Gems Cheap Eats food crawl. Andrew, uh, it's so important right now that people come out, one, just for delicious food, but for sure. two, you know, to support Chinatown so it can exist even like 10 years from now. Yeah, and I mean, I think the first video was very helpful. We got a lot of great feedback of people who were going to the spots afterwards. And it feels good because these are mom and pop spots. These are people whose life it is to run these shops. So we're just trying to let you guys know which items to get and how much it costs because all of these things, most of them are under $10. And it is noteworthy that everything that we are gonna be trying on this food crawl today, 12 different spots is gonna be in the $1 sign category on Yelp. That means $11 and under. That's a cheap eat, especially in 2020. Okay, so David, our first spot that we're hitting up today is Yaya Tea House. This was highly recommended from our first video. And yes, it is a staple in Chinatown, especially for the snack crowd, you know, the younger crowd, Yaya Tea House. Let's check it out. As far as two drinks, what, what do you recommend that like, just kind of has that crazy look to it? Boyfriend or the first love? Wow. You like K dramas, like, J dramas. Can we can we get the sugar down? C but dramas. Whatever still has the look. V dramas. Starting at Yaya Tea House, the flagship on Grand and Mont Andrew, we have uh, the onigiris. Yo, guys, these are onigiri flavors I've never had. This is a vegan gong pao. I think it's based off the kung pao chicken, um, but it's gonna be completely vegan, made out of gluten. I have the opposite of a vegan onigiri. I have a spam onigiri. On a Geary rice balls. Yo, I'm telling you, sometimes vegan food has more flavor than the non vegan version. Yeah. Fun, 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 fun. <laughs> we got the $5 drinks from Yaya Tea House. I have a first love with popping yogurt Ooh. balls inside. I've got a non pung yo drink, Andrew, and this has lychee popping pearls in it. Yo, the popping yogurt balls is something else, man. Guys, I have the gyoza. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't always loved gyoza because they're always so crispy. The yeah. way people I cook would them. take Guotier or Zhenjiao or Jianjiao over gyoza, but who knows? Let's try it. Gyoza are not better than Jianjiao. Gyoza taste sort of kitty. Gyozas are easier to eat because they're smaller. Skin is thinner and crispy, but I can't say it's better. Coming in at the $4 mark, Andrew, I've got the Japanese style shiumai, but in Japan they call it shumai. Japanese, Japanese shumai. You know what? It doesn't really feel like a traditional dim sum shiumai, but it's easy to eat. Coming in <clears throat> at the $7.25 <clears throat> price point. Here you have the pan fried udon with beef, looking pretty good. And then you have the Tokyo bowl. Smells more like katsu chicken than it does teriyaki chicken. Tokyo, Tokyo bowl. bowl. It's not teriyaki. Don't call it teriyaki. It's not teriyaki. It doesn't taste weird or anything though. It's not bad. Guys, look at the elements. You have beef, you have the mushrooms, you have the pan fried udon. You know what could be missing is some egg, but it has cabbage too, so I'm excited. Stir fried udon 725. Dude, this was good. I will come back and get this. Mm, I like that a lot. Man, I think if you come here and you get one of between these bowls, I recommend this one personally. Really well done, man. Yaya killed it. Yaya Tea House, a very cheap way to dive into otakuness in Chinatown. Andrew, next up on our Chinatown Hidden Gems Cheap Eats episode two crawl, we have the Battle of the Bun Meats. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of spots in the Chinatown area where you can get a bun meat, but there's only a couple spots that specialize in it, as in that's the only thing they serve, as in it's in the name. All right, Dave, but one thing about the bun meats in New York before we get into it, they are more expensive than the ones you get on the West Coast, ranging about six to eight dollars each, yeah. but they're pretty good. And they got a lot of different flavors of bun mee. Obviously, we have the curry one, we got a shrimp one. So these are maybe not the most traditional. Uh, each one was seven to eight dollars. Yeah, but honestly, you just need to eat one for a meal. I think that's it. Yeah. Sardine bun mee, seven dollars. 
Um, I did get the egg and the pate add-on though. Hey, so at this point, I'm not saying this is the most authentic bun mi, but this is sounding like a really tasty one. So. I've never had a sardine bun mi before, so. So far, the sardine bun mi kind of tastes like a more Asian version of a tuna sandwich. It's a little bit more funkier, a little bit saltier, but overall, not bad. Guys, this bun mi was only $7, so it's actually one of the cheaper bun mi's on the list. It's probably because it's canned sardines, but if you guys happen to like canned fish for any reason, I would say try it out. Shrimp and onion bun mi. Wow, I'm excited about this one. This one was $8.50. This is a lemongrass shrimp and onion bun mi. $8.50. This one's good. I mean, I would say the shrimp is mad flavorful. It's a little bit got of that pepper cake. It's, it's sauteed with onions. Probably cooked in a wok. This might not be a hidden gem, but this is definitely a cheap eat classic coming in at about $7 each. I mean, for something tasty like this and easy to eat, you can just walk and go. You know, I love New York because you can get slices of pizza, you can get a bun me, just keep on walking, go on with your day. Okay, coming up next, guys, we have something that, again, may or may not be super traditional, but we have a curry chicken bun me. I wouldn't say that it fully tastes like a bun me. It almost tastes more like, it just kind of tastes like curry chicken in a baguette, but I like it. The chicken is super stewed to the point where it just breaks down so easily. Um, I could have done with it maybe a little bit less stewed, but overall, it really captured bun curry ga really well in the sandwich form. One classic grilled chicken. Their chicken is almost like a chicken teriyaki from uh -huh. Sarku. So I think if you're coming to Bummy Saigon, and you're looking for a lot of flavor and you're and you can spend about eight bucks i would recommend getting something like the curry chicken or the beef and lemongrass or the shrimp and lemongrass i think it's totally worth it because you're not going to get that bun me at other spots my favorite was actually the shrimp lemongrass i'm going to come back and get that i'm going to say my favorite of the four that we had was probably the chicken curry the bun curry ga bun me so that was our first bun me spot Bun Mi Saigon on Grand Street, but there's another spot that's just one block up from Bun Mi Saigon is actually Saigon Vietnamese Sandwich Deli right here on Broom Street. I just talked to him. He said he only got two sandwiches left, so we better make them good. Let's check it out. I got a, I got a chicken one. I got the grilled chicken right here. David, why did he say that he almost ran out of Bun Mi's? Uh, it was out of bread. Oh, so he ran out of bread. So unlike Bun Mi Saigon, this spot is a smaller shop, okay? So they might sell out. But this is the combo special. This yeah. is the number one. That's the most traditional one that you get in Vietnam. That's the one, Andrew, they're breaking down on the photo right, all right there. All right, all right, let's try the chicken one first. Andrew, you were saying on Yelp, this is debated. I feel like Bun Mi Saigon, it being much deeper in Chinatown, it kind of has that status, but this might be a sleeper pick. This spot might have the flavor, so let's check it out. This chicken is juicy. It's really spicy. Look at that. I know why they sold out of bread, because the bread is good. Yeah. It's really crispy on the outside, but it's not too thick. As you can see how I'm able to crush that baguette down where it's not too thick. This outer is really crispy, and I'm not gonna lie, it is kind of, you know, massaging the top of my mouth a little bit. But once you break through that first outer layer, it's actually really fluffy on the inside. Oh, this is the chicken bun me I want. Wow. Okay, so Bun Mi Saigon might not be a hidden gem because it's systemized the Bun Mi game, but this spot is. The fact that he sold out of bread is absolutely making it a mom and pop hidden gem. So you guys gotta, gotta definitely check out this spot. Oh, this combo one. So it has the pork roll, it has the Vietnamese salami, and then it has the chopped up grilled nem It's only missing the pate, but for me personally, I could do without the pate. I'm not a pate guy. But, but he said it, it's not like he ran out of pate. It just doesn't come with pate, the number one. Andrew, you know that I am personally not a fan of the house special Vietnamese sandwich. No disrespect to anybody, it's just not my favorite. I really like this one. The curve in that bag, look at the stretchiness of that bread. Oh my goodness. I like it, they keep it real simple here. It's Saigon Vietnamese sandwich. That's what they're serving, and in Cantonese or Chinese, they call it Yut Lam Mien Bao, Yuen Nam Mien Bao. Check it out. I think this might be the best bun me in Chinatown. Which, which sandwich is your favorite? Number one? Nice. Andrew, we are on the corner of Elridge and Canal right now. We are on a street that is considered Little Food Zone. Man, this street has a lot of really good cheap eats and we probably can't get to all of them today, 
but we are outside of probably one of the more famous ones, Super Taste. Andrew, they've got guabaos. Guabaos actually came from Food Zone. Really? So and the they've Taiwanese also... guabao that everybody loves yeah. started so in Fuzhou. A lot of Taiwanese culture, uh, especially more from the South, actually is very much heavily related with Fuzhou. Let's check it out. Hey, what's going on? We are in line here at Super Taste in Chinatown, and we are with... Angela. Angela, you are Fujianese American, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And you came here from Ohio? Yep. Mm -hmm. How'd so. you hear about Super Taste? Was it on the... Um, it was actually recommended by my cousins who uh, live down here, so... Can you tell us about being Fujianese? Because a lot of people were kind of like, I guess, unfamiliar with it. Because I guess maybe it's one of the newer provinces of China to immigrate yeah. to the U.S. Well, I mean, like, I come visit New York all the time in Chinatown. And like, I'm always surrounded by Fujianese people here, so like, I never feel like um, it's not well known. I always feel like it was well, really well known. Um, it just feels like, I don't know, like, I feel like a lot of people have this like stigmatism towards Fujianese people where we're like really loud and really rude. Um, Gangster? Yeah, kinda, yeah. Is it so. true? How much is it true? I what wanna percentage say is it true? about 50 50, I wanna say, <laughs> honestly. Andrew, we are sitting in front of a feast, a Fujianese feast from Super Taste right now. Six fifty for three guabaos. That is tremendously cheap. And Andrew, these are hefty guabaos. So here we have a nice slab of pork belly. It's stewed and braised, super juicy. You have your cilantro, a little bit of green onions, lots of crushed peanuts. Guabao. Wow. Wow. The bun is fluffy. Two dollars. The pork belly is soft melts in your mouth, $2 each. Guys, another item that you will not be able to get at a Cantonese spot is this pot sticker, AKA Guo Tie, and you can see how it's open on the bottom. That's different. Guo Tie. So it's $3.50 no. for five Guo Tie's, AKA pan fried pot stickers. Hey, for the price, right now, Super Taste so far gets a five out of five. Yeah. Here's where they lose some points. They did say on the menu, this is a shoyu tamago which would make you think it's a soy sauce, you know, fluffy yellow egg, but it's actually just a soy sauce egg, so. But, 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 Andrew, can they regain that point with this Roja more that's 350? Okay, maybe. Never mind. I think they even it out with the soft yolk. Rip Roja the Roja more. Off. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm sure John is looking at this right now. Yo, this Please. looks. This looks great, man. Any so, Roja, Roja Moors are actually from Xi'an originally. Right. But, uh, you know, anybody in China is able to cook any other province's food. But, you know, surprisingly, Andrew, not a lot of people do it. Yeah. Roja, Roja Moors stewed pork burger. A little bit on the salty side, but other than that, it's pretty good. I'm looking at a spicy Fujianese nuro mian, shou la mian, which means hand pulled noodles. Okay. This is something that I think you've been able to get at Super Taste for many years. Yeah, right. Even five years ago when we first went there, they had it. However, this mala tang right here is a little bit different. Now, as we guys, as we all know, Sichuan food blew up in the past several years, so they added this to their menu. This is mala tang, as in, you know, it, you can see it has the strips of pork belly in with a lot of vegetables. You have the napa cabbage. You have some onions. You just have a whole pot of just red bubbling <clears throat> this, goodness right this here. This spicy beef noodle soup, Fujianese style. Uh, that's actually pretty good. Overall, I would say, you know, they give you a little bit of spinach in there. The beef is relatively uh, tender. Um, you add in the egg, obviously that costs extra. Pork malatang. Mm. It's actually really good. I really, really like it. It's actually good I gotta well. say, Super Taste is one of the strongest spots we have eaten at out of this entire video. David, favorite thing that you had here? I'm gonna go with the mala tang. Wow! I'm going with the mala tang at Super Taste. Mongo John. Mongo John. Quite good, no? Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All right, our next spot on our Cheap Eats Chinatown crawl is on East Broadway called Hawk Box. Andrew, you have been talking about this spot over the past, you know, month. I've heard you mention it seven times. Well, you know why? It's because it serves Hakka food. Basically, Hakka people are a group in China. They didn't necessarily have their own city. They're also known as Kejia Run, and then they've been moved around China a lot. Let's go. Hey, this Warren, is Warren. Warren, you're Hakka? Hakka. Yo, nice. Yo, the, the food is made by Hakka people, was invented by Hakka people, but it was, um, it was created by New Yorkers, like the immigrants that first came. So this is like New York Hakka food. Sure. 
and we're coming in at the two dollar and fifty cent mark we've got the hock rolls the haka ha my churn so this is a little bit different if you notice haka food and uses a little bit more preserved vegetables you can tell it's a little different than the hong kong style churn fun because they're not using like that fresh rice roll he's using the sheet but it makes it a lot more firmer and it's able to hold together better hock rolls this haka mm. flavors come in strong and they come in bold man this was really good bro that is the absolute best two dollar and fifty cent churn fun i've ever had no cap coming in next at five dollars we have the hock tofu hock -a tofu so the pork meatball got a little bit of funk to it but it's pretty nice it's easy to eat and the tofu is not too soft if you look at this tofu it's a little bit more firm than the soaking tofu that you'll get in like a lot of other dishes so i like the uh firmness of it mm. yo i've never had this dish the last up we got the hock dumplings uh, three pieces for four dollars, but these are these are some big dumplings. Look, I like them. It's got the uh, sweet sauce on the outside. Mm. Definitely come check out Hawk Box. I don't care if you're Hakka, if you're not Hakka, you guys need to know. All right, John. As a northern Chinese person, did you even know that there was other dialects down there other than Cantonese? Man, I guess you could call it ignorant, but honestly, I'm happy to be learning about Hakka because I did not know about this previously. It should be more popular. This is, this is solid. Gotta put your helmet on for this one. <laughs> I just didn't get strapped up for this one. <laughs> We're at our next spot. One of the most traditional spots, Andrew, that was established in 1933, Fong On, mm -hmm. that is sort of going through a rebirth. Yeah, I mean, recently they have redone and gotten a facelift. So obviously their spot looks new, uh, very hip, but uh, they are still serving some very, very traditional Chinese snacks here. Dao Fu Fa, which is a Cantonese dessert. It's like, uh, it's just silken tofu. Fong On, let's head in. All right, guys, I'm here with the owner, Paul, from Fong On. Yo, Paul, can you explain real quick, like, the, the history behind this spot? Well, I mean, my grandfather kind of started a business in 1933 with uh, partners. Uh, Fong On, in our uh, dialect, which is Toisan, uh, it means grand peace. Previously, you know, we only sold the uh, tofu pudding plain with syrup on top. Right. And me and my brother went to Taiwan to check out equipment and stuff. The locals were like, try the, you know, the tofu pudding with toppings. And I was like, what? No, 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 you know? But it was like, hey, you know, you gotta try it. So we tried it and life went on. Guys, I have a savory one. It has uh, dr uh, fried shallots. It has some dried shrimp that are still intact. Look at that. Yo, and it has radish and it has scallions. Oh my gosh. We got a small one for 550. Yo, I'm actually super yeah. excited to try. I don't think I'm trying I have to get this. everything in there. He said mix it up. So mostly for Tao Fu Fa, you know, you're not supposed to mix it up, but he's like, this one just just mix it. Savory tofu. The silken tofu is really soft. It breaks down easily, but then you get a little bit of crunch and crispiness from the fried shallots, bro. I like this a lot. I would say the savory one. I got to give it a 4.5 out of yes. five. I really enjoy it. All right. It. So he said there's no difference between the Cantonese and the Taiwanese style, Andrew. But I actually have a feeling that there is. So that one, that sweet one is not too sweet because mm -hmm. that has the traditional ginger and rock sugar kind of syrup on top. Bro, we got cakes, cakes and cakes and look at these cakes. I got the ginger and matcha, Andrew. You have the white and the brown sugar. I have the white and brown sugar. These are the most traditional flavors here. Uh, I gotta, we got to go with the white first. That's the most Start traditional. with the white one. Rice cake box. Bro, remember always getting this at dim sum. Wow. This is really well made. Actually, this is good. It's kind of like mochi, except it's like a spongy mochi cake. That's the best way I would describe it. Here we go. This is the brown one. Very traditional snacks right here. Matcha cake. I, I actually still put the white one. Yeah, I, put this, I, I can I, see that. No, I you know what? still put the white one at number one. The white cake being the most traditional and having that wine flavor. I feel you on that one. You, you've convinced me. So each box was $6 for two flavors, but you got six pieces of cake. And trust me, these are very, very dense and filling. All right, real quick, we just gotta try the grass jelly on its own, David. Grass jelly is something that's really grown on me over the years. I always get it in my boba now. I prefer it oh. over pearls, personally. That's a whole knoll of grass. That's how grassy Bro. it is. This is of the most grassy of the grass jellies I've ever had. Yeah, this is by far the grassiest grass very. jelly. The last two spots, Hawk Box and Fong On, I have seen people 
that were 80, 90 years old go in and get food. And that's really meaningful to me to be at the same spot as an 80 or 9 year old. And the decor is new and it's actually good, then to me, any food that can transcend generations is, is important to try. And it's important to keep that going. So, to another 100 years. The Chinatown Block Watch. Oh, okay. We just have to go by. Can we, can we take a picture with you yeah. guys? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Hey, would, you, would you mind doing it? Yeah, I can do it. Andrew, this is probably the most requested spot that was not in episode one of Chinatown Hidden Gems Cheap Eats. What is it? Whoa. This Literally, is it was the May number one requested spot. Maywa Fast Food, man. This spot is a legendary spot. It's been in the community for over 30 years, since 1980. It was started by a Taiwanese family. Um, obviously, the owners have switched over the years. Now, it's owned by a Hong Kong guy. But let me tell you Yo, this. Yo, that fried chicken leg is just tasty. Yeah. So, Andrew, you're looking at the fried chicken leg. A, what, roast chicken leg? Uh, actually, it's, this is the same thing. Right. This is a highlight right here. This is six fifty each, and you can feel by the weight. There's a ton of rice. Obviously, there's a lot of meat. You get the extra egg for fifty cents more, but you have some preserved veggies right underneath, and then you have this gravy, this pork gravy right here. Oh my gosh! Right, here we go. Fried chicken leg. Andrew, this pork chop is actually covered in some sort of a star anise gravy. Mmm, very Taiwanese. All right, Andrew, for under $7, Maywa fast food is up there. All right. It's up there. I can't, you know, definitively say one, two, three. Can I it's make up a, there. let me make a case. Let me make a case for it. You're in the middle of Chinatown, okay? You're in on Hester Street. Little Italy's right there. For this price, this is a hell of a deal, man. Yeah. Whoa! Separated like Voltron. And the, and the legs right there. It's dripping, it's so fresh. Look at this, this is love. This is a man. The carnivore is boy here, meets man. Boy meets meat. It's about to be. Let's get it. If you guys know about the Chinatown Cheap Eats world, Andrew, there is a whole nuance to when the ownership switched and switched up the recipe, Andrew, and you yeah. can actually hear the talk on the street, and we've met some people who have acronyms for spots. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Just a lot of stuff. I'm like, oh man, yo, this cheap Chinatown world goes deep. Okay, so is Maywa as good as when it first opened? And I think even these videos that we're doing here, it kind of is like, it's kind of keeping people up to date. If they don't want to cruise through Yelp, or maybe they, you're not sure if the information online is updated, you know, hopefully we're, we're giving you guys some somewhat honest opinions here. And to be honest, guys, we're not doing this just, uh, you know, like as a guide for other people. It's a guide for myself as well. To be honest, I needed a little bit of additional motivation to come out and do the reviews. But man, great NY Noodle Town. This is a legendary spot. Marco, you're from the LES. Have you been here? Yes, I have. I've been here since I don't even remember, honestly. It's been years. I've been coming here late night at the bar, come with my boy. This spot is beloved by local Chinatown natives, but also by just outside random Western people. Oh, and even David Chang, the famous chef, he has a bunch of dishes here that he loves too. Uh, can we get one ton with beef? Beef too? Yeah. Beef one ton. Do you want beef or beef too? This is the greatest place to get Chinese food, especially yeah. their side sauces that they have. Yo, so she ordered just uh -huh. a whole pack of the Gurung Chong, the ginger scallion sauce right here. So this is what a lot of people call it. They call it like the Chinese chimichurri. I think it's something it pretty different, it pretty but is. yeah. It so here, Marco is exactly, explaining yeah. great yeah. NY noodles yeah. to another so, like, non like, the yeah, They usually put great it. Great job, Marco. Yeah. Look, look at you. You're I'm schooling trying, people I'm on great NY noodles. I'm trying to teach them a little bit. Look at you. Yeah, I want to know because I just love the You asked for the ginger scallion sauce. I'm going to. Marco will make sure you get it. We are in front of the world famous Chinatown famous. Mei Lai Wa Bakery. Yo, this spot is famous for their cha shu bao. It's super fresh. Packed to the brim. It is with tasty. Pork. I gotta say, definitely on the affordable end, it is probably the best cha shu bao I've ever had. That's like sub under three dollars. Aren't you guys? So I got notified that you know some of the other items were gonna take too long to cook. So I just grabbed everything that they like got on hand. But those are the items that the majority of people order. So that's baked cha shu bao's. You know, steamed chashu baos, chicken kaime baos, all types of baos, steamed baos, go baoting bao. Okay. Oh, this is the 
steamed char siu bao. Wow. And you got the uh, the special combination. It's got an egg in it. It's yeah. got Chinese uh, lop churn. Yo, chicken lop churn. This has everything in it. It has char siu. It has ch chicken. It has lop churn. It has an egg. It has some pork. Yo, Oliver, can you eat pork? Yeah. Well, right. I can, but. You, right, right now in the moment. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna say. What up, man? Chill, yeah, chill. Yeah, you, uh, you do Indo TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, man, if you wanna try one of these buns with us in this vid, man, get in here. Yeah, I've, been, yeah, yeah. I've been eating here like 20 plus years, years man. I'll, I'll go to yeah, man. Oliver, jump in, jump in, jump uh, in. You know what? I'll jump in, I'll jump in. Grab, grab some. This one, no meat in this one. No meat in this right, one. Alright, we got sweet, Oliver dude. here. You're so, Give him a quick one sentence uh, rundown of you. What, what up, homies? My name's Oliver, born and raised in Queens, New York, television host to all of Southeast Asia. Big yeah, fan yeah. of the Fung Bros. Yeah. Are, you, are you doing it? Are you hosting more in English or in Bahasa? I'm actually doing a, a little bit of both. May May la la. La. All right. This combo bun is crazy. It has everything This is low-key super good right here. Their pork pieces are almost a little bit more like pork belly mm -hmm. with the fattiness, whereas a lot of spots it's like maybe more leaner. Mm -hmm. you, got, you got a coconut bun, Oliver? Yeah, there's a coconut bun. It's really, really sweet. It's pretty tender. I'm guessing it's fresh right out of the oven. Yeah. And I don't know how well it's going to travel, but right now, literally fresh off the oven, fantastic. On the special bao, uh, it was really jam-packed with stuff. I would recommend you try it. But I can't say I like it more than the original chashu bao here. All these buns were under $3. Yeah, after a long day of hosting 17 shows, you come here, grab a bow. Thanks for popping in, bro. Yeah, appreciate Peace, bro. it, bro. Appreciate oh, yeah. it. Thank right. you very much. Peace out. Okay, we have made it to our next spot called Dim Sum Go Go on East Broadway. I've never been here before. I've seen it before on Yelp. I've walked by it. But this actually it was a fascinating concept the more I delved into it. Yeah, so what they're trying to do is basically serve really high quality, slightly French influenced dim sum, but to you in a very casual and quick way. They have a dim sum platter right here. This was $15.95. Now, I know that's a, that's not necessarily under $10, but for the quality and the variety that you get, I gotta say that's a cheap eat. They got all types of different stuff, man. They're using all natural ingredients on the wrappers. Dim sum go-go. I do feel that French influence. It, it feels a little bit more like some of the elements you would have at like Mont 32. Yeah. So each of these dim sum plates is about 450. I know that's not like necessarily super cheap for dim sum, but honestly to have this quality, that is a deal. Shrimp wrap mango. This is something that you'd really find in Hong Kong only. Mm. This is like a spinach crystal wrap dumpling right here. Ear mushrooms, it has the wood ears, some regular mushrooms. I wanna say some like clear vermicelli. I'm not really sure. We gotta try the chicken feet. Now the chicken feet look pretty traditional. It was made, Andrew, it was made to order. It was steamed right when we set it, so. Wow. Much more garlicky than uh, other chicken feet. Mongol John, he got a Mongol dad, he got a Mongol mom. Woo! Man, a lot of people commenting actually think I'm Mongolian for real, man. This color, this colorway right here, this is the new, this is the new colorway right here. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ready, Do ready? some go-go. Wow. Yeah. Ordered one of everything, and this is the spot. All right, how yeah, familiar? So awesome. How, have you guys had dim sum before? Yes. I think I did, yeah. it, like in Utah. People are really friendly. I, I, I you know, I just love it. Love yeah. it, love the vibe. You're Mexican? Okay. Yeah. Um, when it comes to Mexican food, and dim sum is primarily steamed. Yeah. While sometimes maybe the food might be fried first or whatever, or braised, but it's actually coming all in steam baskets. Mine say, like, like, this is something simple for me, but how we, like, serve our tortillas and bring them to the table, yeah. it's usually, like, you know, we want them hot, we want them kept like this, a little bit steamed as well, and that to me is, like, more of a homey meal. So, yeah, this is comforting. Uh, yeah, steamed yeah. tamales are, are kind of like... There's actually a dish, the rice wrap. I don't know if you guys had it. This one. Oh, no. This rice wrap here, we call it a lo mai kai in, in Cantonese. Mm. This is actually literally like the, the Chinese tamale. It's a rice wrap. Nice. It's steamed in a, in a lotus leaf and it has like meat inside. It's the closest thing to a tamale. No, for sure. yeah, I'd love to try yeah. that. You know, to be honest, this is probably the first time I've ever had dim sum outside. So, uh, man, it's been good so far. On to our next spot. Uh, what's your guys' background that made you guys want to start the... So uh, we've been here for almost 20 years catering to the Buddhist crowd, uh -huh. all the vegetarian as you can imagine. Uh, but the vegetarian community has exploded. It's not just Chinese people, 
locals anymore. We got uh, people from all over the city, all over the world, really visiting our establishment because it's relatively unique. And so while we are waiting for our vegetarian dim sum and barbecue meats, all vegetarian, all vegan, just imitation at Buddha Budai, Buddha Bodai, we're gonna go across the street because I heard they got gem beans. Let's see if this is true. Jersey, just to get stuff to eat here. Okay, what, yeah. what are your favorite spots that you found like for yourself? Is that pecking duck? Oh, okay. Like right, right, right there? Yeah. Nice. Do you feel like the foods in Chinatown, it is like priced very, very cheaply or yeah. very affordably, right? Yes. Like a good value? Yes, definitely. And I feel like the taste is better. Right. Yeah. You're saying like versus like the spots you could get in Jersey. Exactly. Definitely. From the hood, man. Way different. Yeah. Way different. Andrew, we are looking at a gem bing Woo! in Chinatown. Man, this gem bing looks good. All it's right, got right. shrimp. I got, first of all, this is not a traditional Beijing flavor. The sha ro. It, it's, it's a sha gem bing. So it's like, you know. Yo. It's going in. Show more of that. And I saw somebody else getting it earlier. They were expressing that they didn't have this where they were from. In the hood. They don't got this in the hood, man. David, but you know, we gotta move through the jambing and get to the vegetarian kosher Chinese food. And right here we have a plate of their vegetarian chashu. It looks like meat. It's it not. It looks just like meat. It looks like very fatty meat. Vegan, Vegan chashu. chashu. A little chewy, sweet. Yeah, it does taste like chashu. And it's kosher. It's also halal. Andrew, this tastes more like chashu than some of the cha shiu you get at the American Chinese spots. And if we're looking at a vegetarian shiu mai, shiu mai normally heavy on the pork. Okay, I'm gonna pick up this vegetarian ha gao, AKA the shrimp dumpling. Here we have the chili oil, which I'm sure is not made with beef oil. I'm sure it's made with vegetable oil or peanut oil. Ooh, woo! Let's try it out, man. Yeah, they're, they're, they're chili sauces. They're not playing around. Whoa, that chili sauce is kicking. All right, guys, here I have the vegetarian cha shiu bao. It looks just like a chashu bao right there. Honestly, everything's been really good. And I had heard a lot about uh, Buddha, Bodai, but honestly, you know, Andrew, me and you are not vegetarians by any definition of the word. So I, I didn't realize I would totally come here if I wanted to feel light. Mm. It's very interesting. He was telling us that all types of religious leaders, whether they're monks, people from the synagogue, people, uh, rabbis, or people from the mosque, uh, they can come here and enjoy Chinese food. It's a hidden gem if you eat meat. Check out Buddha, Bodai. And you know we had to end off at the most popular influential boba chain from Taiwan of the past two years. I would say boba trends come and go every two years. And this brown sugar milk tea from Tiger Sugar really set the mark. I mean, I think it's the inspiration for the very popular uh, brown sugar boba ice cream bars that, you know, blew up in the past year as well. That's David, all. I have never had Tiger Sugar in my life. You've never had a Tiger Sugar drink? Never had a Tiger Sugar drink from Tiger Sugar here. Andrew, we are looking at the most influential boba of the past two years, the Tiger Sugar Brown Sugar Drink. I've got a number one with the cream. You've got a number two with the Tiger Jelly. Uh, I have got to say, Andrew, it's clearly advanced because almost everything on the menu has the same brown sugar tea base, and you cannot really make any modifications. All right. All right well, let's mix these up. Will you shake it? Tiger sugar boba is on an entirely another level. It tastes like a melted version of the ice cream bar. This is absolutely dessert in a cup, man. Not gonna lie, it's not really something I would pick up and drink on a regular day. You know me, uh, not really into boba pearls as much and the very thick, creamy milk tea, but I gotta say, it, it is quite delicious. Overall, I've got to say, Andrew, that even running this episode a second time with entirely new spots, I think I started to realize how many sleeper spots there really were. I think, you know, episode number one was awesome. Number two, it allowed us to delve more into off streets and deeper cuts. And I was like, oh, there's like a whole new world on some of these streets. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you could in a way run a full Cheap Beats video on just one street. One thing that I've definitely taken away, even more so in episode two, Andrew, is that all these owners of these Cheap Eats restaurants, they have a story. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching episode two of our Hidden Gems Chinatown Cheap Eats video. So in the comments down below, let us know if there's any other Chinatown Cheap Eats spots that we left out because we did take your suggestions from video one and we try to go to them in video two. So leave them in video two and then we'll go to them in video three. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. You guys remember, support your local small businesses 
bring cash if you need to. Um, and much love to everybody in the grind and the hustle. Until next time, we're out. Peace. Peace.